Okay, okay, there, there, okay. So, this is my Halloween costume last year. Um, it's just a black t-shirt that says this is my scary computer hacker costume. Um, egg body not included. That That's just creepy, though. Um, however, this year, I just stuffed that shirt in with my little carrying case that I put together. All right, now in this carrying case, we've got a few different items. Let me clear off a little space on the table. All right, so in the carrying case, um, in back, we have the launch pad, which I got last Christmas. Wonderful thing. It's basically just a keyboard. Wow, it is like glowing with this brightness on the... There, that's more realistic. It, it's just a MIDI keyboard, but in the shape of a grid. And uh, also, a, it's also a synthesizer, but instead of making sound, it lights up these buttons. Um, and it's really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm not using it as much as for the MIDI keyboard aspect as that, yeah, it is just, just an 8x8 grid of LEDs for this project. Uh, the next section, we've got, get it out. Because this bag is just a generic bag. It doesn't have, like, proper separated things. All right, then we also have the launch control. Uh, this is this is along the same lines, same company, all that. It's got eight buttons, and then I guess four over here and two over there. Uh, and then it has 16 knobs, which is great. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have my laptop and a, and a cord. I'll get to that later. I've got, let's see, okay, right, I have this battery bank, it's, used, it's meant for charging phones, but I mean, it, you can also just use it, like, it's that much percentage right now, and it, it has, uh, has two 1 amp ports and one 2.4 amp port, um, oh, right, this I got last Christmas, this one, I purchased recent or uh, soon after that with with Christmas money. This one my mom had and she just gave to me um, for other purposes. Um, and then this next thing, Raspberry Pi. I mean the the logo kind of just looks like a raspberry, right? But when the if you exclude this black exterior, you're not actually hold on. I'm just gonna pop it out. This is a this thing is a pain to get in and out. Okay, but basically the green PCB in there with all the stuff on it, that's the Raspberry Pi. This black casing is just a case. And it's got like a little cover as well. Very nice, uh, easy to like put in your pocket. Uh, it, what it's meant, I mean, it's a Raspberry Pi is just a computer. Right, it's very small. It's about the size of a credit card. And uh, and it's also got uh, this GPIO. Right over here, and th those are just wire leads that you can connect whatever you want to, and you can control it with different programs, um, and you can write your own programs and all that. I'm not using that for this purpose. Uh, the reason I'm using this is because, for one, it's very small, about the size of a credit card. Um, although at this point, I don't know, that's that's quite a few credit cards thick. Um, um, but uh, I, I'm using it because it's small, can even like fit in your pocket. Though I might have to figure out something different for that, but um, but also because it can be powered by this battery bank. Like I say, it has one two one amp ports and one two point four amp port. Um, Raspberry Pi, it comes with a it comes with a uh, power adapter that's two point five amps. So this battery bank can power it perfectly fine. Um, and it's great because that means it can be in my pocket. It's awesome. Um, I think I have something else in here. Right, there's there's like cords and stuff wires and such bunch of cords so yeah uh and i mean i designed this thing okay because i mean like obviously th these are not like okay, hold on i gotta fix this all right uh th like this like this guy this guy uh, and this guy, I mean, I didn't design these. This guy, the Raspberry Pi. Oh, yeah, and I got this from Grandpa on my birthday. Um, the Raspberry Pi is made for, like, sort of DIY projects and such. 
uh, launch control, launch pad. They're really just made for like making music. Like it just uses MIDI. Like I say, it's like a keyboard. Um, and then battery bank is used for charging your phone. So uh, this thing is certainly um, not. It requires a bit of assembly. Um, but I mean, it is really simple. So uh, here's the custom. Oh. All right, so uh, here's what the oh man, this part okay. That's what the costume starts as, right? And like, imagine this chair is my body, uh, just less egg shaped. All right. Um, so first thing we do is we take the launch pad, and uh, we just stick it underneath the shirt. So here, let me like figure out a way to just kind of prop up this phone. Here, here like, you just lift up your shirt, put it under. Your shirt. I mean, it literally just. Like, it goes. Alright, hold on. Hold on. So, yeah, it, it just goes underneath your shirt, between your shirt and your body. Um, probably when I actually, like, do this for Halloween, uh, I'm gonna have, like, a secondary shirt underneath because. The back of the launch pad and launch control and stuff, it's like, I think this is silicone, probably. And, um, and that can, that can get cold in the October night. Um, yeah, it, it's just... It's under there, as you can see. Um, alright, so, and, and also, uh, the way that you would secure this is that you tuck in the shirt... And then you put on a belt, and that, that's pretty much how you have to do it. Because otherwise, that thing's gonna want to fall out. I mean, it wants to anyways. But All right now, the launch control. The original plan was that it would be like be on my arm. However, it's very useful to have like two hands with it. Like I can have my one hand. Dang it. Okay. Yeah, they were, I mean, you can have my one hand, my other hand, and I could just, like, hold it, because this thing is actually, like, I mean, it's not super heavy, but this is attached to my arm, like, all night, that's gonna be a pain, um, and that's not gonna be good. So, I'm probably just gonna, like, end up sticking it in my pocket, whatever, and pull it out, and boom, and, uh, I mean, there's your credit card size, so, I mean, it, it's... It, it's pretty big, but, well, my pants with larger pockets, it's okay. Alright, so, I mean, then we got this, need the battery bank, gotta make sure that it's plugged into a 2.1 amp, or 2.4 amp port over here, because uh, 1 amp, will, I don't, I mean, I haven't tested it, and I don't want to, because, I mean, it, it, it every once in a while will give me power usage issue things, um, just by having the launch pad and launch control plugged in. Um, so you have, you just need uh, some earbuds. Um, you don't even need to have two sides. In fact, it's preferable to just have the one. So I mean, the other side broke, and I just like taped it. Like I just taped it to the rest of it, cause I don't know. I didn't want to cut it off. Maybe it'll be useful <laughs> eventually. No, it won't. No. Um, but I mean, you you, you want to only have the one side because that means that you can still hear pretty well. So you just plug that into Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B. Um, okay, and then you've got your cords here. Now, I might want to do some more testing, but because the launch pad is like in your shirt and it's going to be jostled around a bit more than this guy, um, and it's harder to just like plug back in. Um, I mean, this, this guy right here, this guy is the launch control port, or plug, and this guy's the launch pad plug. They're the same plug, they're just, one's right angled and one isn't. Uh, but usually I've been switching that around. Because, uh, because the launch control, I mean, I don't know, I, I still haven't completely decided how I'm gonna do it. It's, I got like 10 days or whatever. I do have to get this plugged in so I can show you 
So there it is. All right. Now I'm going to plug in the other one into the launch pad. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm either in the final thing. I'm either going to thread it like through the through one of the arms, or just down and back around the bottom of the shirt. But for now, I'm just gonna have it come out through the neck. This kind of DIY stuff is pain. I mean, it's not even DIY, it's just like, hat together a couple of things and boom, there it goes. All right, so now it's plugged in under there, as you can see. Um, and then I just have it coming through the arm here. All right, next step, you're gonna take our Raspberry Pi. It's got its uh, USB ports. Just got to um, Okay, so you got that plug in. Then you, then you plug in the launch control over here. I'm going to use my right hand for this because I'm right handed. No, oh, my arm's still itchy. That's annoying. Alright, um, oh, here, I'm just going to. Right, boom. So now all that's plugged in. I'm actually going to get a drink of water. Hold on. All right, got my water over here. All right, um, so now everything is plugged in. You put this in your pocket or on your arm or whatever. Actually, while it's turning on, you probably want to have this in your actual hands because uh, it'll give you an indicator when it's on and that way you can like be ready to go with it. Or you could just turn it on and just put it in your pocket and then like, and, like, cause it'll probably be on, All right, so. It's going to just confirm that it's working now. I mean, this is certainly no production ready piece of, piece of hardware here. <laughs> I, I, okay. All right, now final step. I actually usually like to switch these around. If, if I like to plug in, hold on, plug in the power cable to the Raspberry Pi, and then I sit down actually. So I like to plug it into there, then I take the other end, plug it into the battery bank, and uh, keep in mind, once again, that in an actual scenario, or, or like, you, you shouldn't just like plug in a USB cable from it, from like a computer or something, uh, you, you want it to be a high enough amperage. So I mean, you got the 2.4 amps, uh, the recommended is actually 2.5, but... Still works. You can see there's lights there, so it definitely has power. This thing flashes every once in a while, like that. That thing does that. That's just because they're turning on, and every once in a while this cuts the power to them and brings it back. Part of the boot sequence. I mean, like I said, this is just a computer right here. But the size of a credit card, so it's very nice. Right, so now, oh boy, white balance, come back to me. All right, yeah, this thing gets power over and over and over again. There, it gets it again. And um, let's make sure we are on user three, because this launch control has different templates. You can press factory or user, and user can be configured. I just have them all default right now. All right, boom, okay. So that that's what it does when when it's uh, when it's fully booted. So that's good. I'm actually going to leave this guy open because it, I think it's been having some overheating problems a little bit, but that only manifests in the form of it's getting really slow. All right, so here's this guy. All right. Now, uh, oh man. I wish I had speakers. But uh, so the reason that you need to have a, some earbuds is so that you can hear what it's telling you because, I mean, there's obviously no screen or anything. But, so, like, when you first turn it on, you have to press 4. 
Okay, it's doing that again. Hold on. Okay, so slight issue. Keep forgetting to fix it. But uh, so it, it's actually good lead in to how you like access any more configuration. I mean, th this is this is set up so like this thing. I mean, here let's just. Um, here, if I, I know what the buttons do. In some, somewhat at least. Okay, so that, that's the end result, okay? Of course, we've got... Got all kinds of different patterns. I, I mean, this is designed to be configurable however you want. I mean, I have it set up with all kinds of different configuration. Um, it's just, just so beautiful. Uh, but it, and it's made, uh, so it's really easy to, like, create one of these light show things. Um, I mean, really easy, sort of. Um, but, I mean, you got all this different stuff. What, uh... What, how do you actually like use it? Like, how do, I mean, how do you configure it if you want to configure it any more than just stuff like this? Um, especially like if you, how do you create that new light show and uh, how do you get it on there? Well, uh, I, I mean, well, the, the I'm using Python for this whole thing, anyways. So, uh, wonderful library called Flask, and uh, it's it's a it's a thing that's really made for like making a web API, but, but it's, but it, it works with this, not only just because this is basically a web API, um, but also because, like, it's really simple, like, you just, you just write your, you just write the code that would happen when, uh, when a person goes to a certain page, and then you tell it that it's for that certain page, and then, when you go to the page, it does the, it, it, it's so wonderful. Um, but, uh, I mean, this little guy, he has Wi-Fi built into him, which is great, except, which is great, except for that, uh, that, like, if you want to connect, if you want to connect this into Wi-Fi, I mean, for one thing, what if you, what I'm like when I'm out and about, if I wanted to do something, I there's no Wi-Fi nearby that I own. Uh, and number two, if I'm like at somebody else's house and I need to set this thing up, how do I tell it how to connect to its Wi-Fi? Like, do I how do I give it the password and such? Um, so actually, this thing has its own Wi-Fi network that it just broadcasts and it's wonderful. Host APD is ugh, it's so good. Uh, so. I just have to come over here. It's called uh, it's called Spooky Hacker Costume, uh, and the basically uh, once you're connected to that, then uh, you open up a web browser. This thing is my laptop is so slow. All right, so yeah, you open up your web browser. And then, uh, and then it also has its own DNS server. So you just go, so you just t go to spooky. Dot hacker. Usually it works. Boom. Okay, right. So this is a not found because there's nothing at this. But here we could go to the so spooky hacker. Spooky dot hacker slash editor. Boom. 
All right, and then when we go there, boom, we got the editor. This thing is great. It's got uh, it's got just an eight by eight grid. Then it's got what color you're doing, a save button, a load button, previous next frames, frames, uh, delete the frame. Uh, and this checkbox over here is non-functional because uh, you, if you press hold on shift and you click, it just sets it off again. Um, so if we just were to do like, I don't know, maybe we'll get like a red. No, no, no. Fully red color. All right. Maybe I just want to do like something like this. We're just like I'm just clicking through next frame as I do this. You know, hold on, I'm just gonna real quick do this because it, it's good to have two hands when you are doing it. All right, all right, so here you go. Uh, this is the basic thing. Uh, there's no like play button, you just have to click. So here's first frame, second, all right, and it kind of just goes along. Okay, boom, so it's got 12 frames in total. So now you've spammed the previous button. All right, and then you click the save button. That opens up a little window up here with a bunch of stuff in it. So you just want to select all of it, copy it, and open up like notepad or something and you just want to paste it into the notepad document now let's see this this guy uh, and then you want to save it so we're just gonna call this guy uh, red sin, r no red uh, moving line and dot uh, txt okay cool um, and of course the, this file is gigantic uh, for the amount of information that it actually has. Uh, so, this file is 6.5 kilobytes. It has 6,500 characters to describe that little thing. Because it's easier. <laughs> I mean, basically, for every single one of these 12 frames, it just has a list of every single one of these pads and what color they are. Um, and it makes it easy. I mean, MIDI, originally I was just going to do MIDI because, I mean, this is, this stuff is MIDI and that, um, and it does actually get sent as MIDI mess. Th these, this information does get sent as a MIDI message in the end. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's inefficient, but I mean, what, this thing has a 32 gigabyte SD card. So, oh, let's see, um, if we say three, t no, I need a calculator all right if we say 32 times 1024 times 1024 times 1024 all right so that's a lot of bytes okay and now I want to say divide by 6490 all right um, so we could have that we could store this exact thing down here that many times. And of course, that's any sequence of 12. So we could have, let's see, and then if we divide by 12, right? Okay, so we could have approximate, no, wait, crap, no, times 12. Times 12, all right, cool. Right, so we could have, we could store this, like that amount of frames on this. Okay, we could have, Sixty three million fifty three five hundred and thirty one million one hundred and three no sixty three million five hundred thirty one thousand one hundred and three frames. Um given that that's standard speed that it normally is at. Alright, so that's basically thirty one no three million one hundred and seventy seven okay. No, 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 this guy, and then divide by 24. Whew, okay, so basically we could have 30, almost 37 days of, of a light, of light shows. Um, so yeah, I mean, given that I loop them most of the time anyways, that's not going to fill up, so it's fine. Um, 
Of course, this is also just a personal thing. I don't know why I spent all that time calculating that. Probably just because it's fun to me. All right, so now we have our text document. It's over here, red moving line txt. As you can see, it's just a gigantic big old thing of numbers. And they're like organized in some in some fashion. It's actually JavaScript object notation, but just because I mean it's JavaScript and Python. Um, all right, so we got that. All right, now next. Uh, so and, and now the other great thing about this right here, if we come back over here, this like doesn't save your progress or anything. So if I just like refresh, boom, we now have only one frame and it's all black. However, if we come over here. We can get our text file, copy it, paste it into this load, and then you just hit load, and now it's all back. It's wonderful. All right, but if you want to actually put this onto here, uh, what you need to do is uh, spooky.hacker slash upload. All right, and then you have to go find your file. So in this case, we have uh, uh, da, 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 red moving line txt. Okay, but then you also need to give it a name. And uh, because I'm stupid, I didn't make it so it automatically appends the proper extension. Dang it! All right, so we got that. Okay, and then you just have to type in. In this case, I'm gonna do red moving line so it's the same but you have to make sure you add in the txt you could also name this something else make sure you got that txt or it won't work i mean i don't know i'm telling you how to do it all right and then it just says thanks now uh, i also need to just switch over to the proper audio device Hold on. I haven't made this part properly work yet, so one moment. All right, let me just. Uh, All right, boom. Okay, so uh, all right, so now uh, we've uploaded the thing. All right, so there it is. Oh wait, no. Here, see, it says thanks. All right, but uh, I mean, at the moment there are like 16 loaded into here uh, of different light shows, and 10 of them are the same thing, but just slightly modified. Um, I should probably disable most of those. Um, but I can screw, I can go through them with these, uh, this guy, this, this down cancels whatever I'm trying to select, this up one, like, confirms it, so if I'm like, I mean, it like tells it in my ear with the earbud for each one, but then I can just cancel, and it just goes back to whatever it originally was at before, um, but, the, but if I want to load, if I want to like rescan and all that, I have to hit four over here. All right, now it's loaded 17, so I know it did something good. Now I'm I'm listening for it to say red, red moving line. Okay, red moving line. Then we just hit that one, and that's it. All right, and then um, this button right here will turn on looping, so it'll just keep on going, but. Um, you just play it. All right, boom. Now um, this right, this knob right here, this means it'll go backwards. This means it'll go forwards. This one means it'll go forwards then backwards, and this one means it'll go backwards then forwards. So this is like if if like you have something that isn't so oh, here. I can just demo it. All right, so here, here's forwards again. Here's backwards. All right, here is forwards, then backwards. 
And here's backwards and forwards. This is just useful for different kinds of things. And that 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 uh, that actually like, changes the original light show thing in memory and all that. And so I mean it, that works regardless of looping. So looping is still off, but uh, but I can still like do it like that. So now if I turn on looping over here and then I start it, kind of looks like Pong. Um, sort of, I, I guess it does. Then I could also loop it like this. Uh, okay, so that's that knob. Okay, and then this knob is the speed. So if it's anywhere around the middle, it'll be the standard speed, but I can also slow it down to four frames per second or speed it up to, I think, a thousand frames per second, which is just... I mean, you could technically see it's doing something. I mean, the phone is actually picking it up better than my eyes a bit. I mean, the phone is only possible to do it at 60 frames. But yeah, like that, that's just stupid. Um, but then, and then you can go down to 4 again, or you can do the standard... Um, I guess that's... I guess I'm doing like 20 frames a second, I think. Yes, 20. Yeah, okay, so there's that. Alright, then we also have a brightness over here, which just multiplies the the brightness of each color in the pixel. So, like, if you wanted it to be kind of darker, you can do that, or you can turn it all the way back up. And that's just a constant thing from 0 to 1. Wherever you turn it, that's how bright it's going to be. Um, this guy... And this guy were they were faders like as in like a, a, if a pixel or if one of those grid cells is a color and then the next and then the next frame it is then black it will kind of be it'll be like half as bright of the color and then the net and the next frame it'll be like a, th a third or fourth bright as that color and then it'll get darker and darker for whatever you have it set to I moved that because not only was it like taking forever to compute that, um, it was also like overheating a bit, and it was and so that was slowing it down even more, and so that's no good. So pretty. I do want to fix that, actually. Yeah. I'm going to fix that really quick because it's bothering me. Now if I uh, reload it, All right? So uh, I just want to reload that as well. All right, so now you can see. Uh, now you can. Okay, now, now you can see that it there it, it doesn't completely disappear on this side, even though it doesn't on that side. All right, it just kind of just kind of. Get smaller on either side. I like how that looks. I think it looks pretty. It, it's just sending it lots of mini messages. Um, wow, that is that is not that bright. Hold on. Hold on. That's oh boy. That is in no way that much brightness. Let's see if I can tone that down a bit. Wow, that's just, you know, it, it, it's way more muted than that. Whew, that's just insane. Yeah, I mean, it is in no way that bright. It, it's like, if you look at the very outside of one of them, that's, like, still really bright compared to the entire thing. Wow, that's insane. Hey, that, that's, that's really pretty. Um... It's very solid color across the entire pad. 
Well, mostly. It's way more solid than what you see on the camera. Whatever. Does not matter. Alright, so there's that. Um, yeah, there was, a, there was another thing. Alright, I had, like, the deleting thing. Um, all kinds of good stuff here. Let me, let me actually, uh... Let me actually check this here. I'm actually gonna do this. Oh my. Ugh. All right. Um. Alright, now, I just uh, reload everything and check how many there are. Alright, now we only have like 12 different light shows. Because I had just 5 that were completely redundant. But yeah. Wait, what did I... Oh no, what did I do? Dang it. All right, so for some reason, it brokered itself, and um, now it's like super sad or something. Yeah, uh, every once in a while it'll do this. Luckily, it's not that it's not that difficult to fix. So uh, all you gotta do, I mean, it's recommended to just kind of get out of there. Uh, maybe even disconnect from the Wi-Fi. You don't really need to, but you might as well, right now. Right? No, don't, don't wrong. Or whatever. Um, but basically, all you have to do, really, uh, make sure that, like it's not gonna break anything or anything. But then just like unplug it, right? And and now the Raspberry Pi is off. Then all you gotta do, plug it back in, and it'll begin turning back on. Very simple uh, fix process. Uh, I really should make it so that it can figure out where the MIDI devices are after it's on, but it does not like to do that for some reason. Anyways, I, I think half hour is enough explaining of this. I, it's, it's, it's a dang Halloween costume. I mean, I'm just, it's a scary computer hacker costume, right? Well, this is like, I hacked this together, so boom. Now it's like bringing back the real meaning of the word hacking. It's awesome. Gotta make the white balance properly. Yeah, and I mean, given that it is really just like a web API over here, I mean, I, I could, I mean, I, I could add it in, and I also could have just made it in the original first place. That I could have not needed this and just made it completely a web interface, right? But, I mean, not only do you just have a web interface attached to your stomach, um, but like, this is so much cooler. Like, come on. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is this one is one I call test three. Uh, it was the third test. Um, it, and it's basically just it spins around here. This is what it is, right? It just spins around. Okay, but then you can also make it go in reverse. Or you can make it go forward, back, or back, forward. Or you could just uh, loop it and make it go forward, which is also great. And it just looks cool. I mean, I, I, I could and I should also um, like make one where it doesn't have the middle or the corners. So it would just be that blue spinning thing. That would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, also, the MIDI protocol, I hate it so much, like, MIDI is absolutely an evil, evil protocol, um, designed to torture the minds of the people that work with it, but, I mean, I mean, the, the, uh, the, 
the people that created the launch pad or innovation they are uh, they have turned it into something pretty great um now it, there are actually two ways to light up these lights here the first one is uh, just the normal note on so like when you say turn this note on like uh, this is I forget what you know this is, but if you say turn this note on and and uh, with this volume or velocity then it, it'll set it to whichever color is with is for that velocity um, which is great however which is great however um, MIDI was created back in the days of, uh, of good old 7-bit computing um, instead of 8-bit um, so you're, you're stuck with going from 0 to 127 uh, so that's 127 colors not including black or off so that's not good um, that's not helpful in any way uh, because I want to be able to make all the colors, and if you look over here, my uh, my color file, my, my my light show files, uh, it's it's a JSON object, it's a JSON serialized object, or really just an array of. Uh, I mean, it's an array uh, where each array, each item in the array is an array, which is like a frame, and then each item inside of that is uh, is one row, and then inside of that is each pixel in that row, and then inside of that. Are the are the red, green, and blue, and uh, the reason I can do the red, green, and blue is because uh, MIDI, uh, some like people that made it were like, hey, you know what? People might want to like use this protocol for like things that we might not think of um, back in what the 1980s, 1970s. So they had the brilliant idea of adding system exclusive messages, which have a certain header, a certain footer, but it's just a list of bytes and. It, whatever like a device says that they are, you can use them that way. So the launch pad Mark II here has a system exclusive message where you can set a specific pad to, or, or you can set whichever note, really, to a, to, to a certain red, green, blue value. Although, uh, these red, green, blue values are even less precise. They're actually uh, 0 to 63. So you get 63 values, not including black, but that's for red, green, and blue. So, I mean, you get... Where's my calculator? i got to find it. If we say 64 to the power of 3. So you do have, like, 262,000 different colors you can make. That's nowhere near, like, 16 billion or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know, let's see. If we take that divided by 128. Yeah, so I mean, we do get like 2,048 times as many colors as if we just use the normal no down messages with velocity. Um, the, the interesting thing about this though, at first, what I ended up, what I was doing was I would just, I mean, like really you should I was, I was just iterating I'm gonna pause this also clear it oh that's bright um, so I was just going this pad uh, send it a message to put its color than this and I would just go up now that's great except for I mean it's a small delay but uh, small delay times 64 uh, like, it would take at least a tenth of a second for it, for it to light, for, like, starting when it lights this one until it lights this one, that was at least a tenth of a second. So, and you could clearly see that it was going up like that. That's definitely not what I want. Um, so I eventually figured out that system exclusive messages can be repeated. So you, instead of putting the header and then the data and then the footer, you put the header, the data, and then you can put more of that same data and it will still be interpreted the same way. And then at the end, you put your footer. 
um, and you can and for the for the this specific one you can repeat it 80 times, which is 64 plus 8 plus 8. Yeah, it's 80. Um, so I mean, you you can set the entire thing with one MIDI message. Now, granted, the MIDI message is uh, 80 times for uh, and then like it's about 330 bytes but I mean come on USB what do you 330 bytes that's not like that's like bruh and compared to a node on message or something like that it's it's a bit but come on, it's 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 330 bytes that's so like nothing not even it's more like 325 to 330 bytes or something like that but yeah so I, I just so every time that it does something every every time that it changes at all it every single time that anything on this changes it's actually sending a message that tells it every single one of these what rgb value and it makes me happy also that is so bright <laughs> On, on the on the phone lens at least let's see maybe I can turn it down maybe look make it look like a bit more a bit more sane okay so if you took this right and then you made it like a little bit brighter I don't know what the blue is still mm. it's just that's that's crazy how bright that is on a phone camera. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why this is a this problem. But that is just about, like, when it's here, no, because, mm, I mean, sort of, but still, it's like, wow. Okay, I have rambled on for long enough. Um, bye.